up everybody it's Andy with unknownphotographer.net and today I'm going to show you guys a quick technique that I use for most of my skin softening this technique is really good because it saves as much pixel information as possible I really don't like that mannequin look on when I'm skin softening I love the normal texture and pores that regular skin has we're just softening it up and maintaining all that okay so the first thing I always do anytime I open up an image in Photoshop is I always make a copy of my background layer and I do that with a shortcut the shortcut is control J on a PC command J on a Mac and guys I really want you to get used to using shortcuts it really does save a lot of time in the long run so just try to memorize them as much as possible all right now that that uh, layer is done I'm going to first zoom in because the first technique when it comes to skin retouching is to actually clean the skin and get rid of all these little blemishes and everything and make sure the skin is as clean as you could possibly make it I always like to do my skin retouching or my skin cleanup on a transparent layer and I do that by going down to the layer palette click on new layer and as you can see a new transparent layer is created and you know it's transparent because it has all these little checker boxes and I'm going to label this clean up. Oops. Okay. And I, then after that, I'm going to go over to my healing brush. And once I click on my healing brush, the menu up here changes to my healing brush menu. You always want to make sure you're on content aware if you are on Photoshop CS5 and above. This is a phenomenal uh, way to uh, use the healing brush. If you are on Photoshop CS4 and below, proximity match is going to be your best bet and the secret is in this box guys if if you want to edit on a transparent layer you must make sure that sample all layers is checked by default it's not checked so make sure that's checked if you don't have it checked since we're editing on a transparent layer there's no pixels so there's no information that it can edit with when you have sample all layers checked it'll actually take information from the layers below as well okay so with our cleanup layer selected I'm just gonna tap around and the secret to using the healing brush guys is to actually tap um, you don't want to do gigantic brush strokes like this even though in Photoshop CS5 it works phenomenal because of the content aware you you still don't want to do that so I'm just going to tap 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 and just for sake of demonstrations, I'm going a little bit faster than I should be. Uh, the longer you take on this, guys, and the more detailed you are with your skin cleanup, the better your image is going to be. This is one of the longest processes of all. And I apologize, but there's nothing faster than to do this. So once that's all cleaned up, and just for sake of demonstration, I'm going really fast. Uh, you notice that Jordan has a little bit of powder on here I'm just gonna try to clean up a little bit of it uh, most of the skin softening should take care of that but if not we can always just come back and, and clean it up a little bit later so I'm just cleaning up these little tiny little blemishes that I just see that are a little bit too much and then I'm gonna go down here and just clean it up she's got beautiful skin anyway and blah 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 I'm just cleaning up just take your time guys and, and do a good job and this is actually gonna help you out okay once that's done I'm gonna zoom out and what I want to do next is I want to merge all these layers onto a new layer okay and I do that with a shortcut control shift alt E on a PC or command shift option E on a Mac is gonna take all these layers and merge them onto a new layer just make sure your top layer is selected uh, because it'll actually merge from whichever layer is selected and below so if I was to you know do the shortcut from here it'll actually just take this layer and this layer and merge it into a layer in between these and that's not what I want so just make sure the top layer is always selected when you are using that shortcut once that's done I'm going to label this softening okay and make sure you label your uh, layers guys because once you get into 20 30 40 layers it gets a little bit confusing and especially like for example this transparent layer if it didn't have a, a label I really can't tell what's on it from just looking at the thumbnail so that labeling really does help okay once that's selected 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my blend mode and choose vivid light. And I know it's going to look freaky, it's going to look weird, but that's okay. That's exactly what I want it to look like. Once it's in the vivid light and you have this super high contrast image, what I want to do is I want to inverse the image. And I do that with another shortcut. It's Control I on a PC or Command I on a Mac. So I'm just going to hit Control I since I am on a PC. And it's going to look all gray, all weird, all everything. Okay. The next step that I'm going to do is crucial. And I'm going to convert this to a smart object. And a smart object in Photoshop basically means that you are telling Photoshop to maintain all that pixel information because I might come back and edit it later. It's really important to do this because in this process, you can't really tell 100% if everything that you're adjusting is going to be perfect. So you always want to have that opportunity to come back and edit it later. And the only way we'd be able to do that is using it as a smart object. And you convert this as a smart object by checking, or not checking, I'm sorry guys, right clicking and going down to convert to smart object. And that will come up with this little tiny icon here. And that just means that it's a smart object. Once it's in a smart object, I'm going to come up to my filter and I'm going to go down to blur and I'm going to go down to Gaussian blur. Okay, but before I click this, I want to tell you guys, remember, this layer has been inversed. Since it's inversed, everything that I do in my filters is going to be completely opposite because the, the program right now is working opposite because it's inversed. So when I click on Gaussian blur, it's actually going to sharpen my image, as you can see here. It brought out all that detail, and that's what I want. I want to see the detail that I'm going to desharpen later. I know it's a little bit weird and confusing, just trust me guys, this is how it works. Once my Gaussian blur window opens, I'm not going to be able to use my zoom by clicking on the zoom tool here to zoom in, and I really need to zoom in. So the way to do that is to do to use control plus on a PC or command plus on a Mac. I then hold my space bar and it converts it to the hand tool and I can just drag around and uh, move my image around. And I want to focus in on this forehead has got a lot of the, the detail here that I want to get rid of and what I want to do is I want to increase my pixel radius you see if I lower it way too much there's no detail there I want to increase my pixel radius until I have a lot of the detail but without going too overboard guys because look what happens when I start pushing my radius really high up I start getting all this color fringing starts disappearing it's just weird looking effects so for this image in particular probably around 7.8 to 8 pixels on your image, it's all going to depend on the resolution. Obviously, the higher the resolution your image is, the higher your pixel radius has to be. So 8 pixels is good enough for me. As soon as I click OK, uh, it's actually going to create the effect below it because this is a smart object. And I'm going to have an entire tutorial on smart objects and how they work. But just know that this effect down here is actually affecting this image right here. I'm going to zoom out again looks pretty good to me the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my filters and I'm gonna go to other and I'm gonna go to high pass as soon as I click on high pass my image now looks like total glamour shots total quinceanera or sweet 16 from 1982 that's not the effect that I want to go for but it will be after I use it so once again I'm gonna zoom in to our forehead and I'm gonna show you guys space bar to just drag around and look and as you can see the this is my horrible uh, skin cleanup job here here's some uh, you can see the blemishes are still here there's a couple blemishes here and a couple blemishes here and we have a little bit of detail here so what I want to do is I want to start increasing my radius I'm only focusing on my skin I'm not worried about the hair I'm not worried about the eyes I'm not worried about any of that stuff I'm gonna start increasing my radius until I see a texture on the skin that I'm really happy with. And as you can see, she still has skin texture. Just it's much softer. It's got a kind of a glowing look to it. So for this image, it looks like 43 pixels. 40 to 43 pixels is right. Again, on your image, it's all going to vary depending on the resolution of your image. So this is all to taste. And since we're working on a smart object, it really doesn't matter because we can always come back and fix it later. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right. 
once I'm happy with my radius, I hit OK. And I just double click. And as you can see, it's affected everything. And I don't want that. So I'm going to use a mask to mask out all the effect on all the areas that I don't want it to be. And I just want it to show in the areas that I do want it to show, like her forehead, her nose, her cheeks, her chin. Okay? And I don't want it on her eyes and all that stuff. So I'm going to click on my mask. Make sure that softening up here is selected. I'm going to click on my mask. And a white mask is going to come up. And in masks, uh, anything that is white is going to reveal. Anything that is black is going to conceal. So in this image, because I'm lazy, I always try to figure out, hey, am I going to paint more with black or am I going to paint more with white? And in this case, since I'm going to paint more with black, I'm going to start and inverse my mask so that it's all completely black. And I do that, again, with a shortcut, Control-I on a PC, Command-I on a Mac. And as you can see, my mask is now black. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to zoom into her face and use the space bar to move around. Grab the brush tool, B, and I'm going to paint with white because white reveals and black conceals. I'm going to paint with white everywhere that I want the skin softening to take effect. And as you can see, it's softening up the skin but it's also leaving all of that detail that I love. It makes it look a little bit more real. And guys, and since I'm using a mask, if I do happen to mess up, like go over her eye or whatever reason, all I have to do is paint with black and it'll actually just bring that detail right back because it's hiding the effect. So I'm just gonna keep painting with white and just softening all this area here. You have to be really careful with the shadows because it'll actually lighten up the shadows. And for example, see on her lips here how it's got a whole bunch of extra bleed and stuff. So all I do is just go back and paint with black and just get rid of the effect right there. Make sure her lips are really sharp. She's got beautiful lips. We want them in total detail. I always like to sharpen a little bit under her nose too, just to maintain. Make sure her eyes are really in focus. Her eyebrows are in focus, and you could always change the size of your brush and come in and just add the effect a little bit lower under her eyelids. You know, guys, just take your time. Make sure it's detailed. And if for whatever reason, let's say, like, see under our eyelids right here, this effect is just too much. All I have to do is lower the opacity on my brush and paint, and it'll actually do transparency. Um, so it'll be like half and half of the effect. Okay. Now that's done, it's looking pretty good to me. I zoom out to always check. It looks pretty soft. Let's see the before and after. This is the before and the after. Before and after. It looks pretty good. Another benefit to using the smart objects, and the reason I want you guys to use the smart objects, is if for whatever reason the skin softening is too much or it's too soft, I could always go back to my Gaussian blur. Just double click on the Gaussian blur, and it'll... Uh, you'll be able to see the effect. Oops. Or you could click on your high pass again and it'll actually, you can raise it or lower it, do whatever you need to do. You could always just readjust it because it's a smart object. Isn't that really cool? All right. Any case, once all that's done, if it's still too much, you could always just lower the entire opacity of the layer. I mean, this just gives you a lot of control, a lot of flexibility. And I think that looks pretty good, guys. So this is Andy with unknownphotographer.net. Quick and easy skin rate touching. Before and after. Ciao.